Welcome to Exploring the Mystical Side of Life with your host, Linda Lang. Hi, this is Linda Lang from ThoughtChange.com, and today we are exploring the mystical side of life and the Kabbalah with spiritual teacher Aliyahu Gian. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Aliyahu, you are the first Kabbalahist on this show. Could you please give us a really brief overview of what the Kabbalah is and what's possible by studying it? I should describe it like a philosophy, like information, knowledge, if you wish. And basically that information and knowledge help people improve their life. And um, it just, it's not just improve their life from a mystical point of view. The reason it's called mystical because whatever we don't know, it's mystical to us. It's almost like there is a seed in the ground to create a tree. So the reason Kabbalah deal with the seed, which whatever is under the ground, so you can basically will have a better view of the trees, the leaves, the branches, and the fruit. So there's a few levels we're dealing with, but people don't go sometimes deep enough to go to the roots. And Kabbalah deal with the roots with a why, not with a what I see, but why do I see what I see? Why am I in this relationship? Why am I in this type of business? What brought me to this lifetime? Reincarnation point of view. So there is a lot of information there that helping us totally understand and have clarity. And because we have clarity, it's much easier to make decisions. Maybe if we go to the historical event of the beginning of Kabbalah, if you know the story from the Bible, uh, Adam and Eve being kicked out uh, from the Garden of Eden, serpent, snake situation, uh, so try to think, how do we go back? So going back, uh, they receive a book from an angel of them, Raziel. And the angel of Raziel, basically the first book was actually Kabbalah. So going back to the Garden of Eden is basically, you need to study, you need to understand that wisdom, so it will slowly sort of bring you back. So actually the, the original good is actually in the, in the past. So it's almost like we need to, find a way to go back home. So instead of everybody is looking into the future celebration, where in Kabbalah we look into the past celebration, meaning what was the number one event of humanity and was creation. So the creation of humanity is the beginning of everything. So this is the seed level. I'm not saying the creation of the world. I'm talking about the creation of humanity. And once we connect to that, you know, we are tapping into the energy that take us back to our seed level. And because of that, we have better control over our life. But if we're looking forward, we become, I would say, too reactive. Uh, and when you are too reactive, normally you're gonna make some mistake, normally. You know, it's just the way it is psychologically, you know. And so there is a way then through the teachings of how to deal with our past uh, circumstances maybe come to terms or find the blessings hidden within them? Within the teaching, there is information first about who you are, what you're doing here, and then there is also motivations. So it's telling you this is the what happened then and this is what you can do better. For example, uh, you know, like I wrote in my book, The Laughing Billionaire, chapter two, I'm talking about forgiveness. Most people look at forgiveness as, why should I forgive somebody who hurt me? But why wouldn't you? Do you want that person for the rest of your life and next lifetime with you? The people you can forgive is the people who come with you next lifetime. You welcome them into your marriage, you welcome them into your family. That's what they are. So if there is people right now you don't get along with in your family, if people from last lifetime you couldn't forgive. So just think about it. You gotta let go, you gotta forgive. So it's information to free your spirit, fulfill yourself, finding your inner power and the ultimate good, which is being happy. Being happy, I'm not about the short-term happiness, I'm talking about the long-term happiness. That's the goal of every human being. If a human being forget their goal, which is to be happy, then they forget everything. You might make money to be happy, but it's a tool. So we are so busy with the tool that we forget happiness. And happiness is the goal of spirituality, you know? Happiness is the goal. I totally, totally agree. And there are so many people 
on the face of the earth that really on the inside aren't happy or don't even really know what happiness is. Mm. Now, one of the things that you teach is how to claim your soul. I think that's a really interesting idea. Many spiritual people, that would be a new concept for them, thinking that, well, they have a soul, so they don't need to claim it. So maybe you could just talk a little bit about that. I mean, I can convince people if they have a soul or not, but maybe I will say that we are built from two forces. One is the body awareness and one is the soul awareness. And the body has to do with the survival kit, you know, the thing that we need to survive. Everything that you do with your body, I don't know, shower, bathroom, uh, uh, sex or making love, whatever you want to call it, eating and all the above, you know, things that relate to the five senses. Then there is things that don't relate to the five senses. They are the soul. This is uh, how much you love. So I love you too mild. You cannot say that because it's something non-physical. So the soul and the body are operating a little bit different, sometimes even the opposite. The body want to take and be selfish, the soul want to give and be kind. So we live in a war, you know, within us. Everybody tries to solve a, solve a war out there, but actually this is a war, the body and the soul. This is how we make sure they, they get along. So when I'm talking about claim your soul, I'm talking about the soul actually tell the body enough, please, enough. Let me write this life myself. Because if you let the body ride, it's almost like you have two beautiful horses and you have a wagon attached to it, but you somebody else took the reins from you. And when they took the reins, yeah, it's a beautiful horse, a beautiful wagon, everything's working. Not well, but because those horses go wherever they want. The young horses, very fresh, they're amazing, but you have no control of where they're going. That's the body. So the body wanna take us to places like a little kid that are very risky for, for our existence. It, it can be a stupid thing. And we're looking back and say, why would I do such a thing? People getting married and all of a sudden they realize, how did I end up with that person? Very simple, you listen to your body. And the body find that person either attractive or connecting or smart and the ego play a role. But when you talk about the soul, it's at all different level. I'm not connecting for the sake of what I'm getting. I'm connecting for the sake, what can I give that person? So it's a whole new arena. So claiming your soul is claiming your ability to give, your ability to love, your ability to be kind, the ability to forgive, all the things that relate to the soul. But if you're not claiming your soul, what happened? You're busy with the body. Me, 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 and myself. You know, that, that's all they know about me and my ego and my fear. And uh, especially now, we gotta, we got to climb a little bit one level up, one level up. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And so you talk about the soul wanting to give. Mm. So when, when you focus in on that, are you thinking of the big picture and how each person is here for a purpose and they fulfill an expression by being here and giving back to creation? Or are you also talking about on a more individual level about you know giving to your family, your friends, your community? It's great. First, it's a great question and thank you that will make everybody understand it better. So giving has to start somewhere, you know? So the first step of giving, of course, you can give you practice with your children, with your family, wife, husband, friend, partner. You start in a small circle. But of course, the ultimate giving is to add something to the global community. You know, the ultimate good, according to Kabbalah, the ultimate good is, let's say, there's 1,000 people in one community, you know, one and another 998 given to one person, when that one and 998 given to you. So there is a cycle of giving among everybody. So you never worry about what you need to receive. The community care about what, what you don't have. You're not, you should not even think about it, talk or do anything to do with what you might have or not. So the purpose is for the community to take care of you. Of course, because we live in the universe of basically isolation, uh, not, not just now, talk about in general, living in isolation uh, and everybody for themselves. So right now, let's say if the market crash, 
and everybody for themselves. Yesterday they worked together, now everybody for themselves. So it's very difficult to practice giving when you're finding a survival war of food or money or love. So we become very competitive and because we become very competitive in the wrong way, sometimes it's good to be competitive, but in the wrong way, meaning I want what you have. It's not I want to get better to be like you. No, I want you to be as bad as I am. <laughs> so instead of me climbing to your level, I want you to come to my level. You know, so that's called envy or jealousy. So that's the opposite of sharing. Sharing will be you can share money, of course. You can share time. and You can share knowledge and love. It doesn't have to be money. Some people don't have money to give charity, but you can give kind words. That's not a big deal. What is it costing you? Nothing. You know, you want to be give globally. Uh, if you are rich, you can give money globally. If you are famous, you can give time and love globally. You know, every person born with a gift. You know, th this is really what it's all about. You know, being chosen. You've been chosen to, to, to be rich, famous, uh, knowledgeable, smart. If you use that gift for forgiving, you will enjoy you, yourself. But if you not use your gift for giving, you, you're going to suffer. Very simple. The reason because life is about earning according to Kabbalah. Kabbalah means to receive, to receive energy, to receive love. If you want to receive love, whatever gift you're born with, you have to use it for the community because it was not given to you for you. You know, if a flower is beautiful, the flower shares its beauty with the outside. If somebody is smart, you got to use his wisdom for, not for manipulating, for giving. So whatever you are, that gift that you have is not yours. It's yours to be shared. You know, that's what Kabbalah teach. Kabbalah means you, and if you do it for you, you don't do it for them. If you want to enjoy your gift, you gift, you got to give. You can enjoy the gift of what you have if it's nothing to do with sharing in it. That's why we see beautiful women, beautiful men. They don't have full security of feeling good about themselves. They don't. Or wise people, not necessarily happy because they use the wisdom to take. Or rich people who have billions, that I met so many of them. And... They give charity and they do wonderful things, but they're still miserable because within the giving there is agenda. It's not really given. So all of us, all of us has to think, what am I adding today to the global community? And if I never did sharing, it's okay. Start with something. Start with, if you, if you see a person, say hello. Or go on your media and then say, hey, I love you to somebody. You, or you look great. There's a million ways to share. It doesn't have to be professional course for how to share, you know? You said something very, very interesting, and that is giving with agenda. And that is not really the true spirit of giving. And the paradox in the whole thing is that when you actually, you know, have an open heart and you do give something, like you say, whether it's a compliment or a small act of kindness even, but when you give from that place, you receive more yeah. than what you would think that, that you would get with an agenda. Absolutely. I mean, think about it. I mean, you cannot inhale without exhale. So some of you have ego when we give. The opposite. If I don't want to find somebody I can give to, I have to ask myself, what am I doing wrong? Because it's not that that person took for me. Is that I was able to find finally a person who wanted to see for me. That's a pleasure of life. You know, so it, within everything that is given, within everything, an agenda, if you do it with agenda, you're the one who suffer, not the person you give to. You know, if you, if you don't give really truly, you're never going to get that feeling of love, that feeling of claiming your soul, that feeling of your inner power will come back, your happiness will come back. Happiness as a price. And the price of happiness is you got to give because you know you need it. I need to give. I'm, I'm begging you to receive from me. Okay? So whatever I talk in my book about hospitality, for example, which is the ultimate giving, you know, having people in your house and treating them nice and give them a blanket and a bed and, and food. Like you see in the Bible with Abraham, you know, it's not really complicated. It's so simple act of, you call it act of kindness. Just be kind. There is, there is enough people who want your, your help out there. Just find them. Give. And that's the only way you can receive. 
only way. I'm not saying it's part of the way. If a human being received and there's no giving included, he didn't receive it or she didn't receive it. We didn't receive until we did a, a true giving. Very simple. You have to empty so you can receive. If you didn't empty, whatever you receive is basically went to other places. It's not yours yet. Um, and so as we give more, we will automatically receive more. And in that way, step into our soul expression. Yes, yes. It seems so simple. It's so simple. It's so simple. I mean, think about it like the language of the universe. The universe is a language. So Kabbalists teach that there is four levels of reincarnation. One is minerals, one is vegetables, one is animal, and human being. And within the human being, of course, based on our doing last lifetime, you know, where you go to this family or another family, it depends what you did wrong or what you did right. So you, you make a decision where you're going to go. So if you didn't know how to control your selfish desire as a human, sometimes you got to grade yourself down. So you come as a dog or as a cat, because dog and cat don't, will not judge by being selfish. Because this is the reflex. If you cannot even handle that, then you go one step down and you become a celery, a flower. You know, at least, you know, you receive, but you have to receive to survive. If that's way too much, then you become a mineral and the other way around. So the sharing is for you to evolve. So there is a language in the universe. Everything is alive. The minerals have human within them, the vegetable, the animals, us. So we interconnect to one another. We're all talking to each other. Being able to listen physically and not physically, there's a language that, that the universe talk, that uh, the Kabbalist five hundred years ago by the name of uh, Rabbi Chaim Vitali write that the birds actually has a language. For example, the falcon is bringing good news about the disease will go away. The raven bring the news that the disease will continue. I'm just giving very simple thing. If you have a dog and your dog bow to you in front of the door, that's a good news coming. If it does the other side of his body, bad news are coming. So there is a whole language, the whole universe is, is teaching us. But, but we got to talk the language, you know. There is a language going on here. And that's what we must respect everything around us. Minerals too, I know, I know it sounds crazy. Minerals, trees. Uh, a human being, of course, and an animal. But this universe was designed for humanity. Everything is designed for humanity. The animals, the vegetables, and minerals are helping us to get them because they already been reincarnated in a way that they, they took away from them their selfish behavior. We are the only selfish creature, and we need to work on that. And once we work on that, then we evolve. If we couldn't overcome, like you can be spiritual and religious and everything like that, it doesn't help if, if we didn't get that message. Are you into other people? If you're not, uh, you know it, you know. You know it. If you give some gift and you wait for the thank you letter, uh, it's iffy a little bit. It's on, the, it's on the iffy side. What if you give and you say, I already received my giving. <laughs> now we're getting it, you know. Now I taste the food of my giving by giving it to somebody. Now you talked a little bit about messages from our environment, from the natural world. Of course. And I think that's, I totally agree, first of all, that we're always receiving messages around us, but typically we are too much in our head or we're too busy to actually slow down and notice mm -hmm. the messages. So I think it's actually really interesting you brought that up because I'd received a message this morning about kind of this, you know, changing time that we're in. And uh, I was directed actually to the clouds and how, how wispy they are and how they move, right? They move. Yeah. They're not set in a certain pattern that, you know, things are changing right now. So we would do well to be that flexible and at just allow what is unfolding to kind of take roots and help us recreate our new way of being. Yeah. Yeah. We are, we are right now uh, in the middle of shaping this 
universe, I guess, you know, last night uh, I talked to my wife, I said, you know, when all this negative thing will go away, what will make us remember this time? You know, because this is the time that we're having lessons. And, you know, when we have a good time, we don't want to have a lot of lessons. Good time don't teach us a lot. Bad time, unfortunately, wake us up to study and it turned to become the best time later, you know? Good time, unfortunately, not turned to a good time later. It just, it's a good time, so it's almost like you you kind of enjoy a bite of chocolate and what's next? Nothing is going on, you know? But bad times truly our teaching, you know? And if, you know, a bit of astrology, so right now Saturn and Pluto are basically kind of, they're not best friends, but they are with each other if I may explain it in a simple way, Saturn is the master of structure and punishing and rewarding. And Pluto is the master of destruction. How can I destroy and restart everything from scratch? And both of them disagree. You know, so one side say, quarantine for everybody, everybody stay home, that's what Saturn. Pluto is about, let's break the rules and who care about death and who care about death and enough is enough. So we need both of those forces for later you know, for later, because Pluto will teach us how to renew everything and start from scratch. And Saturn will tell us, slow down. You don't jump right away to, to, to a solution right now. Just slow down. So that's why everybody feels stuck. That's a Saturn. And everybody feels they want to break through with great idea, new idea. You're right, but just give it a little bit of time. Please give it a little bit of time. And I believe that by beginning of June, around June 5th, uh, a big change will happen in the world. So uh, I, I already told people about this change that's coming. And when it was September, uh, people asked me in September what's coming. So I said, well, we just at February, March, we have to be strong. Whatever happened there, I didn't know there is a coronavirus coming. I just knew there is very chaotic time coming. I was hoping there's not going to be a war, uh, but it turned to be... Uh, not a war, but different type of war. A war of a different kind, that's right. You know, so that's basically what it is. This is the time. This is the time. It's been absolutely fascinating chatting with you today, Eliyahu. Is there any other message you would like to leave with our listeners today? Yeah, I would like um, to leave a message that... You are dealing now, everybody's dealing with um, a situation, let's call it. You know, we're all in a situation, you know, and uh, the one thing that if you have five minutes a day, it doesn't take long. It just close your eyes and you don't have to call it meditation, but just close your eyes and tell the universe, I'm with you and I'm here to help. Please use me as a tool to help in whatever way. And the universe will reach out to you. You will not believe how fast it is. It's not to a telephone or email, but things will just happen around you. So that's what I want to leave people with. Please synchronize with the universe. The universe love you unconditionally. The divine love you unconditionally. That's an absolutely beautiful exercise, something so simple to do. And I bet you it would work miracles to start bringing possibilities and giving people a feeling of contribution. I think that's so important. Yeah. My wife and me, when we build uh, the nonprofit organization for spirituality, we want to make sure that it will be free and available for all people all over the world, wherever you are, especially now. People just click on it and just study. And some of the study there, of course, is deep. And some of the study is simple. I, I'd rather people go on the site and just go to listen to the simple stuff, not jump into the depth of whatever was written 4,000 years ago, because I don't believe we should do that right away. Uh, it's better to start more with the modern Kabbalah. It's, I call it Kabbalah Gene. And soon I'm going to release a lot of videos for you guys that you can claim your soul. And uh, yes, I mean, on the site, the site called uh, vitaltransformation.org that's the name vitaltransformation.org and um, I hope you will enjoy it especially now you know you're at home all that you have to do is to click and just enjoy you don't have to pay and if you need to reach out 
to me or my wife, of course, we have our own web. If you need our coaching, it's eliaogian.com. And uh, those of you who want to go on Amazon and read my book, it might help you too. Uh, but again, you've got to be ready. You've got to be ready for transformation and change. That's really what it's all about. Perfect. We will put the links in the show notes. Thank, Thank you. you again for being my guest today. Thank you for having me. You are so sweet and so pleasant. And may God create more people like you, you know, in the world who will have a better universe. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for listening to this week's edition of Exploring the Mystical Side of Life. You will find us on YouTube, iTunes, Anchor.fm, Spotify, Stitcher, and a variety of other podcast platforms. Come and visit me at thoughtchange.com. We'll see you again next time. Bye for now.